All right, hello and welcome back to Ashkabat Cats. Let's play that. Today we're taking a look at Gigas. Uh, I'd show you the intro screen, but this is it. <laughs> well, at least we can check out the cool names on the uh, name entry screen. Although Run DMC is uh, not there for long. Now, I was pretty sure we were looking at a spaceship from that first screen, but uh, apparently we're looking at an Arkadoid paddle. So let's insert our credit and get started. <laughs> The only way that this could get any better is if it had like a little audio bit and it's like, SEGA! Okay, no music, just the harsh, cold echoing of space. So, um, it is an Arkanoid game. Oh. Uh, I can play with the joystick, but it it's pretty comfortable actually. It's not like too sensitive where you press right and you go all the way to the right of the screen. There seem to be various obtuse power-ups. Uh, name entry screen control is a fair bit worse. It's kind of interesting because like... Oh, okay, good. There is continue play. Continue play. If I recall from the title screen, it's at 86, so... That's pretty early for there being continue play. And, uh, well... Uh, interestingly, this is the very first level of the Arkanoid clone. But already we have these diamond boxes, which take a fair bit more effort to break. Um, it looks like you can break them, and are, are we getting power-ups from every single diamond box we break? Because that seems unusually generous for an Arkanoid-style game. Also- Wait, wait. The yellow one. That was not there. Like, 100%. That was not there. And it, it just appeared to make your day miserable. And let's see. So yeah, having little hidden blocks, it's like that's kind of something you only see in Super Mario World ROM hacks. Ah, I see. So I mean, you're looking at the Sega, you're thinking, hey, maybe I'll shoot a ball up straight up the center, and then it can bounce around on the top. And you know what? Sega already thought that too. And so they're one step ahead of you and oh okay well disappointingly as fun as that warp sounded like it wow i mean it's it's just kind of this like weird echoey reverb thing but it does sound quite nice i'm just so distracted by how that sounds it's pretty good And uh, another interesting factoid is now we are in a rainforest. Hmm. Well, okay, so I mean, of course this is going to be Sega's take on Arkanoid. But, uh, I don't know. I kind of like what they've brought to the table here. They've kind of refined the noises, so the noises themselves are somewhat enchanting. I, I don't know, there's no way to really describe them. And I feel like Arkanoid, every time you hit something with your paddle, it always made the same type of noise. But this one, it seems to kind of alternate between a few different noises. Now, obviously, there's no, like, physics or anything. There's no, like, if it hits a certain type of block a certain way, it makes one noise, and if it hits it another, it does. Or maybe there is, and I can't quite detect it. But I think what it's doing is it's just looping through a few different noises as it goes. But still, that like echoey reverb, I don't know, it's somewhat enchanting. And it lends this... <laughs> it lends this sort of an exotic kind of beauty that arcade games typically never really achieve. And then also to the uh, sprites of the palm trees, I mean... While the sprites themselves may be a little bit basic, like, the overall effect is surprisingly powerful. And honestly... Wow, I just almost don't want to talk over the sound. Um, for 85, that sprite work is actually pretty darn good. So, I mean, hey, Arkanoid Games, like, most of what you're doing is listening to sounds and uh, watching backgrounds. And Sega knew that, and so they made the backgrounds real good, they made the sounds real good. 
Okay, it's it's a little less enchanting now that I've let it run its course. Let's see, does the do the blocks come back? The the paranoid schizophrenic in me wants to say that the blocks do actually come back, even though you continue. But no. And so, of course, typical arcanoid rules, your paddle can only move so fast. Now, I'm sure that in the actual arcades, it's an actual paddle. You can kind of tell on the name entry screen because of the way it's, like, sensitive, but it's not, like, that sensitive. Or no, on the way on the name entry screen, how the, the cursor is, like, super sensitive when you use a joystick. It's almost like it's not expecting a joystick as control input. Still though, I'm kind of impressed how well this actually does work with a joystick. I mean, paddle controllers, there's every possibility that it's just gonna go absolutely crazy. You press left and it goes all the way to the left, and, it all, and you press right, it goes all the way to the right. And then it becomes less like an actual Arkanoid game and more like you playing Pong against your, that one really competitive friend where like you, you absolutely have to get the craziest of spin going or else they are just gonna respond and then just beat you. And so, you just you just kind of zoop all the way as fast as you can, trying to get the craziest spin. And, uh, just like... <laughs> well, I was gonna say, just like a typical Arkanoid game, once you get the right power-ups, then the game becomes easy mode, but, uh... No. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> ay yeah ay, ay. You know, I feel like these Arkanoid games have a little more in common with, like, gambling than an actual arcade console because I mean it's all about getting the right power-ups and if you can get the right power-ups you are gonna have like a pretty darn good time and honestly you just get such a power trip from like having the right power-ups and just kind of cutting right through everything especially when you get the one power-up that lets you just cut through the uh, diamond blocks and you're just cutting through it like a hot knife with butter oh man that's nice and then uh little fishes coming around just to mess up our trajectories ball seems to be getting a little bit faster not not intolerable. Well, compared to what it's been, then uh, I can tolerate that. And then um, another interesting thing is it seems to matter very minutely that for the bouncing trajectory, like where precisely on your paddle it actually hits. And so a lot of these Arkanoid games, like there's not a lot of nuance with respect to those like reflection physics. All right, let's try to get a real pretty sound going. Well, okay, maybe not. But yeah, that's that's kind of a double treat. It's like, typically in Arkanoid games, you want to get it kind of stuck in there because then you get a lot of points. But here, not only do you get the points, not only do you get clear the bricks, but you also get a nice sound. But you can't admire it for too long because, uh... Oh, cool. So, uh, yeah, at the very beginning of the game, I thought it was a shoot 'em up I need to get the right power-up, and it can be exactly that. But uh, still, until then... Oh, I see. You don't get power-ups every single diamond block. Yeah, I figured that would have been a little bit too generous from a game like this. I mean, again, they all want your quarters. Don't trust any arcade game, Don't, and especially never turn your back on an arcade game. You can't trust those guys. Like, if you've got your wallet sticking out of your back, and you turn your back on an arcade cabinet, well, bye-bye wallet. Hope you, uh... I already bought a bus ticket, because you, you're not going to have a bus fare after the arcade gets through your wallet. Ooh, hidden blocks. Here they're not in such a disappointing location, but honestly we're at the point where the fact that they even exist in the first place is kind of annoying. Oh, that's nice. So if you weren't paying attention, it went, it went through the fish. It didn't quite bounce off of the fish and go back. So, uh... Just in case you thought the uh, fish, you, you might be able to harness the power of the fish to save you. This isn't Darius. Those fish are not your friends. Well, it looks like we are interestingly close to winning. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet money on it or anything. And how much you want to bet that you have to uncover the invisible blocks before you can beat the level? Or actually, I wonder if there's something where, like, maybe if you don't touch any of the invisible blocks... Then you can beat the level faster because fewer of them show up. But I'm almost willing to bet that no, you'd have to uncover them. How much you want to bet somebody got to this stage and then they were and then they cleared the screen of blocks and then they're like, okay, what now? Why have I not won yet? And then they got mad and then stopped entering credits. 
I'm willing to bet actually nobody has ever gotten in that situation, because honestly, if you have enough patience to get to level 3, you have more than enough patience to just sit there for half an hour, just kind of bouncing the ball, just seeing where it's going to go. I will say, though, this game does a very, very good job of... Well, I was going to say making every shot <laughs> fly off at a different trajectory and, like, keeping you on your toes like that. But uh, as we just saw, well, okay, magic screen has been lifted. Uh, you actually can get it stuck in certain various ways. But it does seem incredibly sensitive as to where precisely on the paddle you hit it. And then there are, of course, all these extra little characters bouncing around, quote-unquote, helping you. And so after a while, you're going to... It's going to change trajectory sooner or later. It's not quite like Arkanoid where it can get stuck in an infinite loop. Well, okay, I'm going to aim for the weak link on the fish, try to get the ball up there. But uh, once we do that, I mean, I'm pretty sure we've extracted more than enough joy from this game. You know, it kind of makes me wonder, like, who exactly are these block-busting arcade games for? Now, I kind of get that they are, like, they make sense on home consoles, because they're, like, great chill-out games. You just kind of put on some music, just fire the game up, and just play over and over and over. But who would play these in an arcade, where, like, it costs money? I guess maybe it's the same sort of mentality going on. It's just, well, okay, maybe if you've got, like, a paddle controller and you feel like you're in absolute control of the game, then, okay, I can kind of see, like, this whole experience working. But, by and large, I am just not, not quite so enthrilled. I mean, again, like, this game tries, and it does succeed, but at the end of the day, it's still like an early style or Arkanoid game where, like, there's just not quite enough going on. Oh, Versus Block Breaker is the one with the monkeys, huh? Okay. The most the game I played with Kevin, that one was like block, Atari block break or whatever. Uh, it, they all kind of blur together. But those ones at least had like kind of interesting gimmicks uh, versus block breaker or at least the one with the monkey. I don't remember much, but I remember there was a monkey and especially a monkey in the thumbnail. Uh, that one, the screen would actually kind of like close in. So and then that would also be like your visual indication of a time limit. And so your screen would actually close in. And so... I, uh, I mean, well, one, it looked kind of cool, but also it would change the trajectories of your shot, like, almost automatically. Because you see with Gygus, it's like, it's trying, like, if you hit at various points of the paddle, it's like, it'll still happen. But then, if you hit it just the right spot, then no, you can, you can get it bouncing all over again. But, uh, with versus Block Breaker, if it ever hits the right wall at any point in time... Because it's going to hit the right wall after a, cer a certain different distance, then uh, it it's going to be a different trajectory and things are going to be really differentiated. Well, on one hand, I, I recall me saying those palm trees looked quite catching way back. But now that I see the exact same palm trees, and that they're not even green now, they're just colored orange or brown to like make it look like something new. I am a lot less enthralled. I'm beginning to see how uh, they may have taken shortcuts here. But on the flip side, like, if you were playing long enough to, like, actually see all that different stuff, then you're probably not going to mind in any way, shape, or form. So it's one of those things where, like, yeah, they took corners. Yeah, they cut corners. But they cut corners in places where, like, no one really minds. And honestly, that's, that's kind of the genius of making games. Like, being able to cut those corners in the right places where people just, they might notice them, but by the time they notice them, then they just really don't care. I mean, Boston Queen Gabriel Hart, they are just rocking it. I'm assuming they cleared, like, an actual screen without dying. Oh, see? Like, he was trying to, like, bump it up and then trick it up, and then they can uh, get it all the way up and have it bounce freely, but no. They are just tricking you. They're like, oh, check out these invisible blocks. <laughs> And it's like, I, I don't know, that just seems a little un unnecessarily sadistic, because you're already making them play a block-breaking game. Like, tricking them with extra blocks to break, it's like, that's just, you you're just hurting them at that point. It's like, why even, why even do that? Well, that seems to be all Gygus has. 
is a little bit of block breaking fun. <laughs> Although I I do like the uh, playfulness of having the Sega as your level one, but unfortunately, there's only so many times you can watch a paddle bounce a ball and then watch it bounce back and forth, back and forth. Well, on that note, this cat's got a scat. Okay, so, uh, well, guess what came up next on the rotation? Uh, an Arkanoid bootleg. And so, well, let's take a look, but I'm gonna be honest, it's, it's just the same as every other block breaker. Oh, it wants me to enter a credit. Okay, fine. So this is coming right off the heels of, uh, I forget the name, Gigas by Sega, and, uh, well, this is, this is Arkanoid. No more, no less. And so it's another block breaker. You, you bounce the ball, you break the blocks. So I'm not going to subject you guys to a whole other video of this nonsense. I'm not going to make this a new video. I'm just going to append this on to, uh, Gigas. Now, yeah, of course, you're going to know this because you're going to be seeing this here. Oh look! To continue the game, insert additional coins. Press fire button and press one or two button. That's kind of weirdly complicated. But I do like how they're kind of thinking of you. They're like, this is the very first game with the continue function maybe, and so we're going to explain to you exactly how it's going to go. Now technically speaking, this is a bootleg, I, I guess. I mean that's, that's what the ROM name says. It says some sort of bootleg. But honestly I can't tell the difference between this and real Arkanoid. So uh... Yeah, I'm just gonna... <laughs> I thought it'd be maybe maybe some sort of weird things happening. Like maybe, I don't know, they changed all the blocks to like stars or something and maybe you can bounce off at crazy angles. But no. You got a paddle on the bottom, you got blocks up top. All you need, all you want, all you can stand. Unfortunately, I've reached all I could stand a video ago and uh, now we're just, we're just doing... I don't even know. So on that note, this cat's got a scat for real. I will admit, they are, they are clearing this screen quite skillfully. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I totally thought the guy would clear it, but no. Oh man, that just... That just grinds my gears.